Hello, I am Mr. Sensnick, Brett Sensnick at Cucalico High School. I'm in room 406 and I teach AP European History and 10th grade World Studies. Uh, please pardon me. I have a little script here, so I'll be looking down to make sure I hit the high, high points. And excuse my reading glasses. In the last three years, I went from, why is the newspaper blurry? to not being able to see anything within the distance of my arm. So I'm dependent on the glasses now, especially with the computer screen. Um, welcome back to school night. Uh, I'm here to talk about your students' classes. First, I'll talk about myself. Um, I grew up on Girl Scout Road in Shenick, and when that comes up, that can be fun with the students. Although a lot of them do know where Girl Scout Road and Middle Creek Wildlife Area is. And so I attended uh, uh, Shenick Elementary School and Cocalico High School. I graduated in 1990. And then I went on to Messiah College uh, in Grantham, about an hour from here, where I graduated um, with a degree in history and political science. Out of college, I worked for about a year and a half before I decided to go back to get a teaching certification. And in the process of that, I student taught at Northern New York School District uh, in Dillsburg. Uh, my first job was 19, fall of 1997 at Governor Mifflin in Shillington. And I taught there for five years. I taught personal finance, economics, um, world cultures, and maybe a little American history. Here at Cucalico then, I taught American history, and we started the World Cultures Elective, which is now the World Studies Required course. And this year is my first year teaching the AP European History course. And Mr. Buck, Mr. Chris Buck's been helping me a lot with that, so I appreciate that. I wanna always give him credit for that. And so this is, the textbook for the World Studies course. Although if your student is in World Studies now in the hybrid format with me, I scanned all the sections of that textbook uh, into PDFs. It is still the most important thing in the course to read the textbook. So if a student is struggling, the first thing that you should be asking them is are they reading the textbook? And just be aware that for the World Studies class, it's in PDF form, and I'll show you on the Schoology page. The textbook for AP European History is the Western Experience, and they should have that. And the AP class will definitely be centered on the textbook, so be seeing them reading that a lot. All right. Um, I think... Probably now the best way is to share my screen and show you some of the things the students will be using and seeing. In this hybrid model, there was a lot of adjustments that I had to make. I am one of the old school, old school teachers who used to like textbooks and paper, and I had no problem with the chalkboard so I had to make some adjustments, but I had been using Schoology. So this is an example of what the student's Schoology page would look like. Um, the student comes in and they choose their course, like either World Studies or AP European History in this case. Their view of the course is not gonna look like mine entirely. I have stuff here that's unpublished that the students can't see. But the students will still see the name of the course and upcoming assignments over here and daily folders that I post. I do it day by day and I put the most recent daily folder at the top. The other folders are still here. Uh, so far, both in AP European History and World Studies, I have been leaving the previous folders open in case students were absent or they missed work or fell behind for some reason. And I've been letting them go back and do work um, to make up work that they missed. If they go back 
into previous folders and cannot access something, they should message me. They can Schoology message me up here. And that would be how they could send me a message. Within a folder, for instance, Thursday's folder, um, I tell them the day of the semester, the day and the date, and the topic so that they can find these folders. But inside of this folder, there's always a what to do day 16 or what to do day 15 or what to do day 14 document. They click on that. That's a Word document that gives them step-by-step -step instructions for the day's lesson. I did that in Schoology even before all of this COVID happened, but um, that's still where I would want them to start to see what they're going to do. And then everything's arranged in order that they should do it. There's a This Day in History assignment, which I will show you. On Friday, they had a video about a certain region of Africa that I wanted them to watch. And then we had a Google Meet followed by a quiz and they had the prep information to prepare for the upcoming Africa test. So inside one of these, um, like I'll open up the Google Meet assignment link so you can see what's inside. I give them, you know, the time of the meeting, the code, what they should have ready, what we're going to talk about. And then if there's additional documents or links, I put that inside the assignment. So if I go back here again to the National Geographic video. So again, now this did not have submissions. They didn't have to submit anything. So there's no list of names over here, but it does have a document and the link to the video I want them to watch and instructions on what I'd like them to do. After they would do that, then they would go to the next assignment and the quiz and then reviewing for chapter three. So that's, that's how they would navigate through. And it would be very similar for the AP European history course. I'll just toggle to that real quick, um, simply because if your students in the AP European history course, I would also mention that in addition to using Schoology, I have them using the AP European history college board site. So it's, it's co AP College Board, and there's AP Central, and there's AP Classroom. And I'll show you a little bit what that looks like, because I want the students not only to use that as part of our class, but on their own, there are tons of resources um, for them. Again, their view is not going to look like mine, but they can get into this AP Classroom, where we have an AP class set up that is sort of connected to Cucalico. And the students will have up here a dashboard of different things that they can do. I choose some of the daily videos and use some of the resources from College Board because they're going to be taking the AP test. And if College Board's given the test, then this is probably some good stuff I should definitely be showing them. The students will also have different progress checks and stuff. But beyond AP Classroom, just the actual College Board website would give them a lot of things that they could look at about the course and about the exam. So I just wanted to definitely point that out. Um, back to the World Studies page or the AP European page, either one, I use this day in history. Um, and I hadn't explained that specifically. So let me open that up for the World Studies class. They know that when they come into this day in history, they can use this link at the top of the course page to go to this day in history for that particular day. I, I could, and, and maybe I should, um, repost the link within each day's This Day in History assignment, but they, they've gotten conditioned where they know where they're going. So they watch the video on the History Channel. It's called This Day in History. Then they have a series of questions to answer, 
they have a submit button over here. So when they go to submit, they can then create, they can copy and paste the questions in, and they can answer the questions right in Schoology and submit their answers. And I take a look at that, both for attendance, but also to try to engage them in something each and every day. And so for both, both AP European History and for uh, World Studies, I use this, and I want to show you what that looks like. Um, first, the overall History Channel website, I am trying to kind of get them to look at that website and see all the stuff that might be interesting to them here. But what that link takes them to is this day in history. Now, I'll go to this day in history for Saturday, and you can experience it for yourself. Here's a look at this day in history. Ugh, sorry. I don't know what I did there. Clicked the wrong thing. Loaded pretty fast, so I think it'll load fast again. All right, and that video is always 30 seconds to a minute long, and I use it for all my classes uh, to get them kind of activated, engaged, like hooked in. And, and there's certainly a lot of things to talk about, whether we're reviewing what they might have learned in ninth grade American history or any time before that, but also I have them then look through the other events down here for this day in history to see what might apply to AP European history, what might apply to world studies, or in the case of this one right here, that's American history, but it jumps out to me as something of special interest that maybe they heard of and maybe they haven't, um, 1990, the Unabomber. And so it gives us stuff to talk about and for the students that are in class that day, we can discuss it in person. For the students that are at home that day, hopefully they can look at it a little bit themselves and I can then look at their responses and see how that went. And since we go back and forth, I at least get to talk to all of the students about this day in history on some of the days. Um, obviously, World War II, Germans bombing Leningrad would have something to do with AP European history. A lot of it is heavy on American history, but still interesting for us, I think. And then there are things that would sometimes apply to world studies course, maybe the earthquake in Mexico, um, maybe Juan Perón deposed in Argentina, arts and literature. The world studies course would focus on non-Western world cultures. That's something I hadn't explained earlier in this video, but I'll go back here to the World Studies course as I explain that. We would, and I talked to the students about this the first day, non-Western world cultures, things that they have not been exposed to much yet at all. Um, places that haven't been as heavily influenced by European cultures. So we'd be studying Africa, the Middle East, South Asia, and East Asia. Uh, South Asia, of course, India, and East Asia, China is the big dog there. So we're looking at non-Western world cultures, and we've already started Africa. We'll then proceed to India, then to China, back to the Middle East, and try to wrap up with Japan. We'll see what we could get. We'd like to, if we had lots of time, also include North and South Korea, um, obviously important in the world today. Also Southeast Asia, because we have a Hmong ethnicity subculture in this area that might help some of our students feel more comfortable uh, if we got a chance to talk about that. Indonesia, Oceania. So there's lots of things we would like to talk about there. Um, just see what kind of time we have. Now I'm gonna stop sharing my screen That'll let you see me again. And 
one embarrassing thing you learned about me in this video is that my ringtone is from the X Files. Uh, sorry that that went off. But if you have any questions, please let me know. You can email me at blsensenig at kukalico.org. And I'm sure it's on the website and should be easy to contact me. But let me know if there are any questions. Thank you.